Hello, and welcome back to another Monster Monday, a series where I draw a creature from D&D and I talk about its lore and its mythology and what it's like to fight in-game as well. In these videos, I like to use your suggestions for monsters that you'd like to see and hear me talk about. So if one such creature turns up in your imagination while you're watching this video and you'd really like to see my interpretation of it or just hear the mythology of it, make sure to leave that down below in the comments section so I can add it to my to-draw list. Once I've bundled up all of your suggestions, I then hand them over to my patrons over on Patreon every single month, and they vote on which ones of your suggestions they like the most. The most popular suggestion gets to be the subject of my next video, and today's topic is absolutely no different. Today we're going to be covering the brutal and bloodthirsty Red Cap, which was first suggested by Ghetto Trout 2011 don't come for me, I don't write the names. Anyway, thank you so much for your suggestion, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to make this video. Without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic, and let's get talking about red caps. At least as far as D&D is concerned, red caps are three to four foot tall fey creatures who generally tend to resemble very old and extremely volatile and aggressive gnomes, with lanky, distorted arms and sinuous muscles, with cracked, leathery skin. Their silhouette is characterised by the oversized crimson hats that they wear, and massive, clunky iron boots that they drag across the floor with each step. In some editions of D&D, redcaps are simply bloodthirsty, small creatures, but in others, and in my personally preferred tellings of their lore, they are not simply addicted to bloodshed, but their existence is actually tied to gory murders. They must slaughter a living creature, often a humanoid, although accounts do vary, at least once every three days in order to keep surviving. Otherwise, they dry up and perish, or are otherwise banished to the Feywilds from whence they came. The red hats, for which they're named, must be constantly soaked in fresh blood in order to maintain their colour, and this is a clear indication and a visual reminder of their tenuous link to life. So look out in particular if you ever meet a red cap whose hat is crusty and darkened with coagulated blood because they're almost certainly desperately seeking out their next victim. Although the truth of their cat bathing and their need for fresh blood and the disembowelment of innocent creatures may actually be a severe cognitive distortion, red caps are also said to be highly paranoid and superstitious creatures who think magically and connect the dots between things that may not in fact actually have any grounds in reality. And again, this depends on who your DM is and what your campaign is like, but there are accounts of red caps either fearing or being said to revile even numbers, always carrying things in groupings of odd numbers, fearing mysterious consequences should they fail to do so. Their paranoia of the even is so severe that while they are traditionally solitary creatures due to their aggressive and competitive temperaments, they do on occasion, in certain rare circumstances, band together in groups. But they will only ever meet in clusters of either 3, 5, 7, 9 or 11. There's never actually been a documented gathering of more than 11 red caps, but then trying to research and study 11 homicidal and frantic, well-armed killers may simply be too dangerous, and scholars attempting to do so may have simply never survived long enough to publish their findings. Either way, this may mean that red caps don't actually die if they fail to kill someone every three days, but their beliefs in these consequences are so strong, they're so grounded, that they are compelled to behave in a way that means that they may never discover the truth or lack thereof in this belief. But in some accounts, they do get stronger and gain abilities from those that they kill. So there could be some precedence for this being, at least in terms of D&D, a reality. While they are specifically fey creatures with an incredibly violent temperament, and in 5th edition we only have the traditional red cap, in previous editions, in certain pre-written campaigns and in certain monster manuals, there have been variations on the traditional red cap who have slaked their bloodlust by dipping their caps in the blood of creatures not from the material plane. Those who soak their blood in demonic ichor, for example, take on the fiendish properties of those that they've killed, gaining massive horns, sometimes wings, and their weapons become emblazoned with hellish fires. 
So there's a possibility that they might become weaker and more desperate the fewer people they have had chance to kill. And with those that they have killed, they perhaps retain some element of their person, some element of their skill, or simply just become stronger the more people they have dipped their cap in, perhaps even growing in size and comparative strength. Maybe they gain the abilities and some stats, maybe even the memories of those whose blood they absorb as time goes on. Maybe these memories and skills fade the longer that they have gone without killing someone. And maybe that's why it's their caps that they dip. Maybe there's some sort of exposed brain beneath. Some memory of the creature that they have slain is absorbed through their red cap. They plunk it back on their head and gradually these mysterious memories soak in through the cap into their exposed brains, infusing their minds with new skills and new abilities, new strengths as time goes on. While very little sympathy can be extended to these murderous, chaotic, evil villains, their struggles are only exacerbated by their complete inability to surprise or otherwise stealthily kill people. Unlike other blood parasites, like vampires who might charm someone, use illusions to make them feel like they are not in danger, or appear as an inky shadow behind them, slaying someone before they have a chance to realise what's going on, red caps are instead locked into the act of a violent confrontation due to their heavy iron boots that are fastened to their feet, growing out of their skin perhaps, and their footsteps can be heard for miles around if they're walking on hard surfaces, or in particularly echoey chambers causing them to have constant disadvantage to all stealth rolls, so they are forced to always meet a well-prepared and battle-ready opponent. Now, they more than make up for this disadvantage with their incredible 18 strength, which allows them to move almost as quickly as most adventurers, that being 25 feet per round, even though they are weighed down by these massive clunky stompers. Now, D&D's actually done a really good job of interpreting these creatures from their initial folklore inspirations, at least in my opinion. The first stories of red caps originated in Scotland, or rather, the Anglo-Scottish border, but when I was a tour guide in Edinburgh, I believed, and thus told a lot of tourists, that they were a Scottish creation, and I'm going to try and not back down at this point, so those who have been on my tours still feel like they've got some <laughs> extra value. But while the exact dates of stories surrounding the Scottish red cap are really hard to pin down, as is often the case with folklore, we know that the red cap was already well established enough to be recorded and associated with stories in the mid 1300s. A book entitled Folklore of the Northern Counties of England and the Borders, written by William Henderson, described the red cap as, quote, a short, thick set old man with long prominent teeth skinny fingers armed with talons like eagles, large eyes of a fiery red colour, grisly hair streaming down its shoulders, iron boots, a pike staff in its left hand, and a red cap on its head. Henderson goes on to state that, quote, when travellers take refuge in his lair, he flings huge stones at them, and if he kills them, he soaks his cap in their blood, giving it a crimson hue. He is unaffected by human strength but can be driven away by words of scripture or by the brandishing of a crucifix, which cause him to utter a dismal yell and vanish in flames, leaving behind a large tooth. There are also earlier accounts, as I mentioned, from the 1300s, regarding one Lord William de Sully, who is believed to have had a familiar known as Robin Redcap, and who stomped the grounds of Lord William, which were known as Hermitage Castle. This familiar was said to have carried out horrendous deeds, violent acts, and inspired Lord William to do the same, so much so that legends state that Lord William was taken to Ninestane Rig, stain being stone in Scottish, wherein he was wrapped in lead and boiled to death. However, this grisly end is perhaps not ultimately factual, as William de Sully was actually imprisoned in Dumbarton Castle and died there and the grisly crimes inspired by this Robin Redcap were merely an excuse which were later revealed to be Lord William's complicity in a conspiracy to kill the then-king Robert the Bruce, possibly the most famous king of Scotland, although arguably not the kindest. While a lot of accounts tie Redcaps to goblins, brownies, and other diminutive folklore spirits that cause various kinds of chaos, 
who require various different kinds of appeasement in Scottish folklore, who will sometimes either leave you alone or do good deeds for you if certain requirements are met. The red cap is instead more of a cautionary tale, a method to deter children from talking to strangers and travellers, and to avoid the clutches of perhaps murderous men who might seek out lone and vulnerable people. There was once a particularly famous cannibal family in Scotland, an incestuous and hideous travelling band of violent murderers, who were all in some part the sires of a man named Shawnee Bean. Nothing to do with good old Sean Bean, but Shawnee Bean is a tale that almost all Scottish people know, and no doubt his murderous ways, his children's cannibalism, and their propensity to flag down people who are travelling, tear them limb from limb, and consume what remains, would definitely have popularised the legends of the Red Cap to deter children from meeting their end at Shawnee Bean's hands. Hey, I just wanted to take a brief moment to say a massive, massive thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon, but in particular those of you who have chosen to support at the Silver Archfey level and above, actually. This month you guys are Raptor Dio, Ken Doman, or Kendoman, Ryan H, Christian Palmer Smith, or Kit, Max Schluter, Amanda and Jake Westfall, Darth Katana, Duck Quack, Peter Balf, Aldrin, Ethan Dibbe, Oliver Thorvald Mellock, Sam Hickson, Bork Boulderbender, Colby Monroe, Styrax, Sky Rush Soul, Nap in Camo, Steve Harrison, Trevor Traub, Dan Waterman, Nathan Stratton, Jonathan Foster, Tim Klemer, Dominique Jolly, Brandon Kerr, Brock Harris, Yorick Bees, Benjamin Colburn, Tamling Darkraven, Max Copeland, and AJ. Thanks to these guys, I get to make this content and you get to see this content. So thank you all so, so much for your support. If you'd like to join the community that we have over on Patreon and get unique rewards, like this nifty little shout out, copies of all of my illustrations, including the one that you're watching right now, one-on-one -on -one hangouts, and the chance to be one of my commission corners, then please make sure to look out for the Arcane Forge over on Patreon. I'll leave a link to that down below in my description box. And thank you so much for taking the time out to help me thank these people for the video that I had the pleasure to make and you are hopefully enjoying watching. Anyway, I won't take up any more of your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Now D&D actually has its own interesting origins for how red caps come about, how you might encounter one, and so on. They're said to spring from the ground in the dirt and mulch that accumulates around a corpse who is violently slain in a fit of rage, and whose body now decomposes in places like forests where the boundary between the prime material plane and the Feywilds is thin. When they first emerge from the soil, or organic slime of the murdered body whose fluids act as a portal for their passage into our world, they're said to resemble red cap mushrooms, as their red hats soaked with the blood of the body that summoned them soaks through their heads. These iconic mushrooms are known as fly agaric, or toadstools, and I'd like to imagine that the herbologists and druids of your D&D campaigns perhaps nickname these fey agaric instead of fly agaric for the red cap's resemblance. An agaric mushroom is simply a type of mushroom with a fruiting body characterised by the presence of one of these little caps known as a pileus or pileus, which is very separate from the little white stalk and the gills on the underside of this cap. And it's said from this fungus-like protrusion, a red cap will eventually grow and climb their way out of the soil or remains of the nearby corpse when moonlight is absorbed through their spongy mushroom-like heads, emerging fully formed and humanoid with their iron boots and weapons in hand. From then on, they are slaves to their desire for bloody murder, constantly needing to soak their hats in fresh blood to maintain their colour, and to preserve them from dissolving away. They are constantly aware of the creature whose violent act caused their creation, and will always know their location. What they do with that information is utterly up to them. They crave violence, but their intelligence and wisdom are roughly comparable to the average human, perhaps a little bit higher, so they may actually decide to seek out this individual and perhaps slay them, or follow them in the hopes of partaking in more grisly slaughter alongside their unknowing creator. And if you're ever writing a detective drama for your campaign, hint hint, it might be worth having a look for one or perhaps several red caps, or at least evidence of their passing, because they might just be attempting to seek out a killer if your players aren't catching all the hints that they need to narrow down their suspects. Now, while a red cap is simply just a little old man, 
having only an armor class of 13 because they don't need to wear armor, and having only 25 feet of movement due to their heavy iron boots, they do still have 66 plus 24 health. And at challenge three, that's pretty good. As I've mentioned before, they have a plus four in strength and a plus four in constitution, with their other skills being roughly a plus one. They can speak common and sylvan, so you can try and bargain with these creatures, although they are obsessed with bloody murder, so seeing as they're chaotic evil, I wouldn't necessarily trust any bargains or deals you make with them. Their intense, sinuous strength grants them an ability called outsize strength, which states that when grappling, the red cap is considered to be medium, and also wielding a heavy weapon doesn't impose disadvantage on its attack rolls. Finally, Red Caps are not great tacticians, but what they lack in strategy, they make up for in brutal combat efficiency. They have an attack called Wicked Sickle, which is a plus six to hit, and deals 2d4 plus four slashing damage. On its own, this is not a particularly remarkable attack, but they get to make three of these attacks per round in a multi-attack. Additionally, they have an ability called Ironbound Pursuit, which says that the Red Cap moves up to its speed, to a creature that it can see, and kicks it with its massive iron boots. The target then needs to make a dexterity saving throw, or take 3d10 plus 4 bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. I imagine this massive drop kick to the shin is simply a brilliant opener, dealing a lot of damage, and then when someone is indeed knocked prone, granting them advantage on this flurry of wicked sickle attacks over and over again, until something becomes a fine bloody mulch. Now my interpretation of a red cap here is slightly different from the monster manual version, and indeed from Scottish folklore. I didn't want to draw them as simply a small angry gnome. I went for a very fungal look based on how they protrude out of the ground and their ties to the Feywild, the red cap mushrooms being a huge inspiration here. I also chose to turn their sickle attack into these long metallic fingers. We already know that their iron boots are in some way intrinsically tied to their person. They can't remove them. They would if they could. So I thought if their weapons were somehow tied to their person as well, that would be really interesting. And it ties back into William Henderson's description of them having eagle talons. So I wanted to give them sickle fingers. I feel like something that's so linked to its need to murder, its enjoyment thereof, and its aggressive personality means that this creature would probably really enjoy being able to feel itself squeezing the life out of someone and slicing through its body. So having slashing talon-like fingers made out of iron or steel seems like something that a red cap would prefer to having some sort of long weapon. I imagine this being sort of like the base red cap, like a red cap once it has fully emerged from the soil, seeking someone out. But perhaps over time, the creatures that they kill shape their body somehow slightly more. Perhaps most red caps, by the time we meet them, looking so human-like, is only because they have slain so many humans and have taken on parts of their appearance. Perhaps they are fungal humanoids who gradually become more human over time. And this is why when they dip their hat in the blood of a demon, they become more demonic, or, and so on. At least that's how I'm going to flavor my red caps. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you're excited to get using red caps and the more vicious part of the Fey available to you in 5th edition. Just make sure not to stray too far into the depths of the Scottish Highlands, in case you see a tiny old man with a red cap. We don't want you getting slain by the Fae. And until next time, happy monster hunting. Mm -hmm.